out of hero's heart this is kyle ferguson today i'm sitting down with legacies zagar this is from storm division pre-workout power versus wild heart omega game three and a last pick zagar thanks for joining me legacy thanks thanks for having me excited to walk through this game uh, Zagara is an exciting hero. What? How did it work out? Uh, why last pick Zagar? There's so many options. Yeah, so I think on uh, Dragonshire, really what the competitive meta has turned into mostly is a 1-3-1. A one, one. So basically, a solo laner top, your three man that rotates, and then a safe bot laner that can uh, kind of, you know, get the soak, you know, potentially poke and, and gain shrine control and uh looking at last pick uh they basically had hanzo in that role and so um you know there's a few different heroes that typically kind of fill that role in a competitive setting junkrat hanzo chromie are some typical ones but uh zagara is one that fills it really well and uh when we get into it you'll see that zagara wins that bot lane pretty hard against hanzo Okay, so it's purely a counter pick or a reaction to Hanzo because of this 1-3-1 one, one business. Correct. If, if bottom had been Zeratul, who's another popular one in this 1-3-1, one, one, Zagara wouldn't have happened there? Yeah, so Zagara, uh, the biggest issue with uh, Zagara is, um, you know, being really susceptible to dive. So uh, some good heroes against Zagara are, are things like Genji and... Uh, Zara tool. So those are, you know, some of the things that make it where Zagara leans into, you know, a late like a last pick type hero. Uh, but you can see just already the the benefits Zagara provides with the rotations, where you know the entire middle of the map is is creeped up, and there's just constant vision on Murden. Uh You always know where he is. Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, when playing Zagara in this. Uh, um, this map and everything is making sure that that middle area is, is creeped up because the big thing that you're susceptible to is, you know, murder and jumping over the wall, you know, stunning you and, and trying to kill you that way. That's an interesting point. So it's not that the enemy team lacks dive. They have Sylvanas, they have murder and they even have Hogger who could get in there. It's more that in this 1-3-1, one, one, you have sight of murder and therefore, I've been Hogger's busy <laughs> in the very, very top. You're not that concerned about it. Exactly. So as long as I have sights on Murden, then I know I'm free to come up and you can see just kind of, you know, Baneling's hitting the wall, Roach is hitting the wall, you know, they start to rotate down and, you know, then I kind of move back. And how much is ETC and the rest of the team kind of warning you or are they doing their own thing? Yeah, they're keeping up communication in terms of, you know, where they are, but, you know, it's something where if you look at the minimap, like you can kind of see all three of them like this whole time. So, you know, there's no risk of you getting flanked. So I'm pretty much free to push this whole wall. And wow, you're kind of wrecking it. Uh, you're up on the wall. It's over half destroyed. There's no real way the mid is going to sneak up on you. Thanks to that creep and your own team sight. Hanzo's really low. Is that just due to roaches poking him with no regen? Yeah, roaches. And then um, pretty much anytime he steps in range, I'm trying to throw my Hydra on him. So that basically chases him to where, you know, unless he goes back behind his wall, it's going to run him down. And here we nice with the lucky, uh, you know, hit right as he's his back's about to complete. So you've got yourself a roach build here. Uh, roach build from my experience is the giant killer build. Is that still true? Yeah. So uh, back what I guess it's almost you know nine months or so whenever Zagara got uh first reworked uh the the baneling build became the really popular one uh it was pretty overtuned at that time uh but before then uh the the roach build was typically the standard and after the nerf i think it's pretty much uh you know the standard and, and the best build to go in in almost every situation so more just nerfed out of prevalence i remember that those banelings were insane for quite yes. a while <laughs> yeah so the, the you know the banelings are still good but you know ultimately uh especially when you're looking at it as like zagara being your your range and not just like you know trying to split push um which uh although we've gotten a lot of push in this game you know zagara is you know really one of the the main ranges in this game uh that we're playing and so 
you know you really want to be able to contribute in team fights and and the the giant killer uh and roach build is is really the one that that helps your team out most late game are you going easy on any of these spells i feel like cigar has early game mana issues but you have not had those issues yeah it, it is one thing that uh I, you know, I think when you first try to play Zagara, you'll get into a habit of, uh, especially early game, just spamming out spells, especially when you look at like spamming out your Banelings, Roaches, Hydra, everything on a wave, and it's really not necessary and you'll run into mana problems. So uh, definitely want to watch that and conserve it a little bit. Level four seems pretty open to your own interpretation. What what do you like about Envenom Spines? Yeah, so Envenom Spines, I think, uh, for me, is generally the best talent. Uh, the uh, the stacking, really, from a Zagara standpoint, uh, you're not really going to get that many autos in to make the stacking worth it. Like, the Envenom is just better. Uh, it allows you to have a little bit of burst when the rest of your kit typically is more poke. Uh, so that's nice. And then uh, really, unless, you know, like I was talking about, unless you're going for like some kind of like split push build, um, you know, the you don't really need the autos to hit multiple people. And then level seven, we're putting some bile drop on that, which might be the hardest quest to complete in the game. <laughs> yes, it is definitely up there. And so, so this is one where... Uh, I think most of the level sevens aren't that strong. Oh, uh, team fight going out. Hey, nice. So, nice escape on that. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so we'll get into why Maw is the pick there after watching the team fight. Um, but yeah, I think Bile Drop is one of the hardest to complete uh, in, the, in the game. But if you are able to, the increase in damage output is just uh is massive uh really just getting one additional roach doesn't sound like much but once you get the percent dam percent damage on 16 uh you know going from you know two to three roaches is you know quite a big damage buff so it's not a johanna subdue situation where the base level or do you, yeah you get a passive increase of 20 percent. so that part of the talent just isn't worth it it's worth the gamble to go for the reward because it's so good and the other towns aren't so good yeah and uh depending on the game it can be more reliably completed or uh than others but yeah i would say in a lot of games you'll see it not completed uh really when looking at the the talent tier the bane link slow is is the one that i would take if i didn't go bile drop but uh, you know, at level seven, you don't really know how many stacks you're going to get over the course of the rest of the game, but I, I typically think that the, the gamble is worth it. So you've now moved up into the top lane. Bottom's all pushed out. So are you done? I guess you're already rotating down, so grabbing a wave for Malteal. Right? Yeah, just, just grabbing a wave. Uh, team kind of overextended a bit on uh, bot keep and, and died, and so just catching the wave. Obviously, there's a little bit of a memorization on the timing there that happens to line up some Banelings since they will explode on the side of the Maw. Yeah, normally, basically, try to drop the Roaches down and then uh, hit the Banelings into it right after for when they all come out of the out of the Maw. Is Nidus viable? Uh, yeah, I, I actually used to prefer Nidus. Um, I think they nerfed it enough that uh, it's Maw most of the time, but uh, I, I know I touched on it a, a few times of just like that Zagara can be really strong at split pushing. Uh, one of the instances, like just an example of when it, it could be good uh, is for instance, like I played it on, on Towers of Doom before where, uh, you know, we've had a solo laner that wasn't the best at, at dual soaking um and basically just being able to to help uh push in the waves and play more top side and, and help with that um you know can be effective so there's different maps and different times where it can be good but basically in those situations where you're going for you know baneling and more split push that i think nidus tends to to be better oh, that's a cool idea so on that towers of doom scenario would you know that looking at the draft that okay we're gonna take zagara and we're doing nidus or 
Is it more of a reaction mid-game saying, wow, that's not going well up there. Let's get Zagara doing Nidus. Yeah, normally it's a draft uh, decision, kind of looking at their drafts, looking at our draft of, you know, what, what makes the most sense. That uh, moth's doing some work in this game. Uh, yeah, yeah. This game, um, and I think most of the time you'll see Ma used uh, more defensively as like a counter engage, uh, since most of the time teams are trying to dive on you. Uh, that's the, you know, I think the most reliable way when you know people are diving on you, uh, and you're able to to hit that. Well, you guys have over the course of this hit. 13, 16, let's talk about those. We have a required survivability level of Hydralis Transfusion, Protective Coating, and Spell Shield. All situational or any bad? Uh, yeah, I think all the 13 talent tiers are uh, pickable and, you know, good in the right situations. Here, uh, I go for Spell Shield. Really, I'm looking at... You know, if I'm going to be dying, it's going to be probably off of, you know, uh, Murden jumping on me, Hanzo arrow, basically Hanzo and Sylv damage is mostly all spell damage. And so uh, really just trying to deny that burst. If you're going to die, it's going to be in three seconds <laughs> when you'll have mm -hmm. a spell shield. So perfect. And then exactly. level 16, you kind of complete the build you've been going with these roaches into the corrosive saliva. Yeah, so 16 is definitely Zagara's biggest spike. This is when uh, you really start to pump up the damage. Uh, unfortunately, the you know there's not much left to this game, so we don't get to see uh, uh, a ton of that in effect. But uh, you know, really, when you know uh, people talk about late game and, and scaling heroes, uh, Zagara 16 is is a pretty huge spike. Are there any other talents at that 16 tier that? work better with other builds or you would recommend uh yeah so uh i would say like if you are going for a split push like mutilus can be okay but uh really uh in, in my view caressa saliva is the percent damage is too good to pass up so if you're gonna split so. push you might as well just take nidus and keep the build the same so you actually have the impact on team fights that you're looking for mm -hmm. makes perfect sense yep. and had you have picked a 20 what would it have been? Uh, the 20 uh, typically go for is pack instinct. Uh, it's another just a big uh, increase in, in damage. Um, uh, basically, whenever your uh, hunter killer is uh, damaging someone, um, and you know you, your autos start doing a ton of damage, and and really that's when um, you can see a ton of verse to you know like a tank. You know, let's say Muradin jumps in on you, and you're you know trying to get away. You know, you're you're weaving autos in there. You have all your minions hitting. Uh, it really does uh, a ton of damage. So, back instinct is is the typical one that I go for. Do you ever take Tyrant Maw? Um, not really. Uh, I mean, really, when I look at the 20s, um, if you go Nidus, I think Endless Creep is good, um, mainly for the uh, tumor range. So, okay, uh, if you look at that, that's a probably that might be the highest percent you see in a talent in the game, uh, a 2000% uh, increase in range. Uh, so basically, instead of being able to place the, uh, the the creep tumors, you know, melee range, you can place it uh, pretty decently far uh, away. And uh, this is really effective, especially late game for, you know, checking bushes, getting vision of enemies, uh, maintaining just that vision control. Um, and and so, you know, once it gets to that, you know, 20 mark, you, your team doesn't really have to worry about, you know, dying out of like you know some bush gank like you have all your minions that you can spawn to check bushes as well as you know farther bushes um you know in more neutral areas you can use that that creep to spot the enemy so for our drafting rules here for people who want to play zagar we have pretty late pick got to make sure you're not going to just get ganked dove and the team's not going to work out and then we have the option of doing this 313 thing, which uh, <laughs> is tough to do in Storm League, I've, I've experienced, but uh, a viable strategy. And then a pickup, M maybe not necessarily like 
Warhead Junction, I'm going to soak everything Nidus. More of we have soak, but should things go behind, I can Nidus and help my team out in that way. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think the the build that I went here in terms of the Roach build is the one you you probably should be going or uh, that you should see in, you know, 90% plus of games. But uh, I, I do think that Nidus has some, some play and some uh, cool things that you can do with it just in terms of uh, split pushing and getting pressure. Awesome. Well, a swift game for an awesome hero. Thank you for joining me, Legacy. Everyone watching here at Heroes Hearth, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell for alerts on the channel, and there'll be more learn-to-play content for Heroes of the Storm.